So, welcome to the Clutch Burners episode number one podcast. Numero uno. That's right. Numero I'm, uno. Uh, that guy over there, that's Rich Guido. And I'm Bill Armstrong. So, let's, uh, Rich, I'm going to ask you a couple questions because some people may not know who you are. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and uh, what you're driving these days. Well, uh, I'm the Canadian Chuck Norris from Red Deer, Alberta. Um, uh, I, I got that name, uh, funny enough, because I do jiu-jitsu and I have a black belt. And it has absolutely nothing to do with Chuck Norris, which makes it hilarious. <laughs> and uh, um, I think it also ties into the fact that uh, I don't have a truck and trailer. And all of these events that I want to do, I have to drive the car to... And there's no trailers involved unless I'm towing it or getting towed home on it. But that's only happened once. And that's a bad day. Um, that's a bad, that's a bad week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you got to ride around in someone else's vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I drive a 1965 Pontiac GTO, uh, 521 cubes with a 94 millimeter turbo. And most importantly, it has a clutch and a nice. G4. Six speed transmission. Nice. Same fully, fully synchronized, I'm sure. Well, I, yeah, every, every gear, yeah, you push out and it goes in. So I don't know. It's <laughs> synchronized that for me. <clears throat> right. And, and my idea of a fully synchronized transmission along those lines is like a broken dump truck. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, can, six, you can make great. it. Yeah. You can make it sound quiet if you work hard enough at it, but uh, it's a bit of work. Yes, yes. And tell us about you, Bill. Well, <clears throat> Bill Armstrong. Um, live in Colorado, about 8,000 feet, so that has its own challenges as far as tuning and cooling issues of the car, as I've come to find out from friends that come here. Um, I, uh, I'm the creator of the Bankship Billy uh, digital clutch controller, which is kind of neat. I'm a little biased towards that. But it, it makes for an interesting comparison because, Rich, you run a... Black Magic fully adjustable slipper clutch, um, and I run a twin disc centered iron diaphragm style clutch, and we both are slipping them in different ways, and it seems to work pretty well for both of us. So um, yeah, it's kind of neat. Um, I have a 1966 Ford Fairlane that I bought in 1990 when I was 17 years old. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's got currently has a dart based 427 windsor platform with uh twin garrett turbos that are pretty little they're like 62 millimeter uh turbos um and i also run a g-force uh t56 magnum uh, with their gear set face plated uh dog box if you will and um i love it it's uh it's pretty sweet and just like Rich Guido here, I do not own a truck and trailer. So these events that uh, I want to go and do, I drive the car, I pull a trailer behind it. And uh, if you see my car in a trailer, that's probably a bad week also. Um, it's been on a trailer and a tow truck uh, yeah, more times than I care, care to admit in probably the 30 years I've owned it. But, uh, <clears throat> but that it is what it is. Oh, look at the picture. Yes. That was a picture that uh, we have been pushing for for a long, long time. Yeah, that looks really yeah, good. Yeah, I make sure. I, uh, yeah, that's Kyle. Kyle yeah. from, I was with his cell phone, Kyle from 1320 Video, Kyle Loftus. Yeah, so, so if you can't message. see this, this is a picture of Rich's car and my car <clears throat> at the big end with both our parachutes out. And, uh, and the light is like perfect, the sun's going down, it's, it's pretty epic. Very so, romantic. Uh, yeah, very romantic. So, so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, where was that picture taken, and what did we do last week? Um, well, we broke some cars. We some did pieces, <laughs> <laughs> but we did. Yeah, we did. We did uh, race week, which is the second part of Rocky Mountain Race Week. But we started in uh, Noble, Oklahoma. Noble, right? Yep. Well, yeah, yep. yeah, Thunder Valley. Yep. Yes, started and finished in Noble, and that picture is actually from Tulsa, though. Okay, we spent. Yeah, and, 
and yeah. you drove from your house in Red Bird, Red Bird, Red Deer, <laughs> Alberta, Canada, a eh? <clears throat> to my yeah. house in Evergreen, which was like what fourteen hundred miles, sixteen hundred miles, something like that. Uh, yeah, what? Well, yeah, it was from the time I left my house till the time we got to the first track, pretty close to two thousand miles. <clears throat> So then you drove to my house, <laughs> stayed the night, and then we drove from here to Noble, Oklahoma. And uh, I, I have to say, scooting down the highway with your car, it, it's it's awesome, especially because we both got 0.5 overdrives, and like 85 miles an hour is like literally what 1700, 1800 RPM. Yeah, it's idling. It's high yeah. idle. High idle. Yeah. yeah. High idle. Yeah. And towing trailers and uh, flying by people in new cars, wondering what in the heck they just got passed by. Yeah, with you and, and I knocking flying down, by. and knocking down. I don't know. We got sixteen miles a gallon. Yes. Yeah. Right. Towing, towing trailers full of spare parts. <clears throat> right. Yeah, we got lots of spare parts. We bring a lot of parts. Um, you bring what you think you need, so you don't need it. And what you forgot to bring, that's what you need. Yeah. That's usually how it works. Yeah, I usually count on you to have my spare parts and vice versa. <laughs> so I think hopefully that works out. But <clears throat> anyway, um, so let's talk about the first event that we did this year because that one ended less than spectacular for both of us. And then I think it was the first time for both of us that we were both out. Yeah, in the same event. Yeah. 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 Sure. So that was my that was my thirteenth event. It was Rocky Mountain Race Week. And uh I had just uh put my motor together. So I was untested and we put it together pretty quick. And same thing, drove all the way down to uh Great Bend, Kansas. Yep. And uh I made the first hit, and uh, I didn't tell too many people this, but the first hit, uh, when I let off in fourth gear. Oh, boy, he's frozen. <clears throat> he was talking about fourth gear, and he hadn't told too many people this. At this rate, he's not going to tell anybody. Or a clear view filter. Oh, hold on, Rich. We lost you there for oh, a second. We... Yeah, so start where you, in fourth gear is where we lost you, and you let off. Oh. Funny, that's where I lost my oil pressure too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, lo I lost my oil pressure. Um, pretty much coasted to the end of the track. You know, shut the car off. Um, I can't remember if I packed my parachute. I don't think I pulled the parachute on that one. But anyways, when I started back up, had my oil pressure back. You, you can still hear me. Yep. Yep. We're good. Okay. And. Um, Drove it back to the pits. I have a clear view filter. And with that filter, you can just hit it with air pressure. And I have a compressor in the trunk. And it it's it comes directly off the oil pump and goes straight through this filter. And so you can see on the screen slash filter if you're having a bad day or not. Really quick. Yeah. And I had nothing in the filter. So I uh, turned up the boost and uh, went out <laughs> for another pass. And... <laughs> On the next pass, it, you know, I didn't get a stellar time, but there was no noise, there were no issues. But because of the first pass, I thought I'm gonna blow the out again. And when I did that, there was some aluminum in there that I had no idea where it was coming from. And it wasn't bearing, it was just strange looking material. Well, I remember um, seeing it, it was, a, it was a big sliver, spiraled sliver of aluminum. Yeah. And so, um, we ended up taking it back to the hotel, took off the um, the timing cover because it's aluminum, thinking maybe the chain was digging into it, but uh, couldn't find anything there. Took the valve covers off, make sure nothing was going on there. So we, we decided to leave it at the track. My dad was, my 80-year-old dad was with me too. We, uh, we ended up chauffeuring um, in a TRX with Aaron Brandon, uh, Trevor, Trevor's wife. Um, so we rode, we still did the week, we still had a good time, um, and they had an empty truck and trailer going home, so uh, they ended up taking the car home. Tell oh, us about oh, your story, Bill. Oh, wait, sorry. You're, you're missing the key point. What did you find in the parking lot in the middle of the night? 
Oh, so when we got back afterwards, we uh, we decided to pull the oil pan off. And when we pulled the oil pan off, uh, there was a piston pin clip sitting on the bottom of the oil pan. Oh, so the, NG. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> pin was riding against the cylinder wall. And only in, and the material we saw was actually from the inside of the piston where the piston pin was moving up and down, shaving mm. it. Oh, so that was okay. the material. So um, one more pass and it would have got real ugly. So that clear view filter kind of saved the day for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and, <clears throat> so my uh, Rocky Mountain Race Week 1.0 was interesting also so i i had freshened up my motor put fresh pistons in it uh rings and then i finally made the jump to a hydraulic roller cam and on the dart block uh if you're not familiar it has two oil restrictors and for years i'd run the solid lifter and i'd always run the front restrictor was blocked and the back one was open which basically gives it priority main oiling done through the mains it comes up through the oil gallery to the cam and then we're good well <clears throat> in my infinite wisdom that was a joke um i thought well i probably need more oil for that cam so i pulled out the front restrictor so there's no restrictors in the block <clears throat> and ran it and i had okay oil pressure went to the track made some test passes at bandamere literally drove it probably a thousand miles because i drove it to race week went through the first three days and <clears throat> was looking great uh was had like a second um nearly a second lead for first place like it was going well <clears throat> got to bandamere and made a eight second pass there and then we heard a ticking in the motor when we got back and i was like huh maybe that's valve train so we pulled the valve cover and <clears throat> my uh, co-pilot andrew Hawkins was helping me he's a fantastic co-pilot and uh, we pulled the valve cover and looked the valve train was good I was like, well, we'll pull spark plugs. Take a look at that. I'm like, that was good. And I said, well, <clears throat> if this is all good, then something's not good. And that's when I decided to pull the oil filter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I run a K and P filter, which is uh, easily inspectable. The center is stainless steel. You can take it right out and inspect it. But boy, as soon as I cracked the filter, just just glitter was pouring out, and I didn't have to take it fully off. We did, but. And it was it. I pulled the plug right there, left the car <clears throat> at Bandemir, which fortunately is near my house, um, had it towed home. And then Andrew and I finished the week, which was a very hot week, in my Volkswagen, which has air conditioning and a stick shift. So it wasn't all bad, but uh, clearly didn't uh, finish in first place. Um, but that was okay. <clears throat> and I, I forget which event it was, but um, it's right up there with your 13, I think. Um, done a number of them maybe not quite as many as as iron man rich Guido, but uh yeah that was that was pretty good oh yeah if you can see that picture um we're not at a strip joint that's just glitter out of my oil filter and it is pretty bad yeah that's that's a good picture i mean it's a bad picture but it's a good picture of the badness We would uh, both be remiss if we didn't say who did win stick shift. That is that is a fact. I'll give you the <laughs> honors. Go ahead. That was Turbo Ted and Old Blue. That's right. Uh, from That's right. right yeah. From the, Canada uh, as well in a 67 Fairlane with a small yeah. block Ford and a single turbo. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He he won a shootout here, and then drove all the way down there and kicked our butts because you can't win if you don't finish. And uh, that's right. Um, and he basically pulled the rabbit out of the hat on the very last pass to move from I think he was in third or fourth into first place. He went from ten o to nine fifty nine um, on his last pass, which moved in him from trouble. yeah, yeah, yeah. In Pueblo, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty, it was pretty cool, cool to see. Yeah, and it was his first nine second pass. I don't know who was more excited, Ted or you and I. Yeah, yeah, no, we were at yeah. the starting line cheering him on for sure. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. <clears throat> um, so you want to talk? You want to talk about how how uh, some dude in Colorado and some dude in uh, Alberta 
met and got to be best friends or what? I, I would love to. So have a little backstory here. Okay. <clears throat> um, I had just recently put a, I had a 351 Cleveland in my fair lane. This was in 2013. <clears throat> and I had to put a stick shift in it because I really wanted to do drag week and there was no way I was going to do it with an automatic just because of the driving and stuff. <clears throat> and a stick shift was, I mean, kind of the shit. So, um, put a TKO 600 in it. <clears throat> I had 457 gears in the car and I drove it to Bowling Green, Kentucky. And we started <clears throat> drag week and I had, uh, kind of walked around the pits to peruse to see who had similar equipment. And I may have even introduced myself to you then. I don't even remember, but I knew who had stick shifts. <clears throat> and then a couple days into it, we were in Indy and I launched the car the and I had day, day two. Yeah, it was day two. Day two. Day yeah. two. Okay. So I had launched the car and the car was running faster than it ever run because I wasn't at a 6,000 foot track. So running mid 11s, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me pump gas uh pump gas motor like i just felt like i was on the top of the world i'd never been that fast like it was awesome and uh <clears throat> day two and i had the total wrong clutch in the car but i just didn't know <clears throat> and one side of the clutch was kevlar the other side was centered iron no centered bronze and it had melted the kevlar had melted itself to the flywheel so at the end of the pass like, i'd push the clutch in but it wouldn't disengage so I came around to the pits and parked <clears throat> and I came up and talked to you and I'll let you take it from here. Cause this is really where <laughs> you do the best. Yeah. So, um, you know, what I, what I might not have told Bill or what we might not have talked about before was day one for the Guido's, um, was pretty hellish dad at that point, 2013. So yeah, he was probably 71 years old. Um, it was brutally hot in 2013. Dad pretty much had heat stroke. We were traveling with a group that was having all kinds of problems. And we didn't get much sleep. And so when Bill comes up to me um, that he's got a problem, I'm getting the evil eye from my dad going, we're <laughs> done racing. We need to get on the road and get to the next track and get me to bed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, um so we, we had a little discussion about I'm staying and we're going to help this guy. So anyways, I see Bill come up and I remember talking to him, you know, basically told him that I had a spare transmission too and an, another TKO with me. And Bill's telling me the story, kind of thinks that, uh, that maybe his transmission is broke. So we start chatting. I'm like, I don't know if it's broke. And so this is the, this is the favorite part of the story. So he didn't have much of a jack. Scissor jack or what the hell you had. Not much of a jack. So I grab my jack and wheel it over there. Big one. And I slide it underneath the car and Bill's lying on the ground uh, trying to align it. And so I start jacking normal. And then he looks up at me and he says, man, this thing has a strong oil pad. Now remember, I don't know this guy from a hole in the floor. And I'm thinking, he doesn't look very prepared for this event. What the hell am I getting myself into? So I start jacking really low. And he's like, he looks up from underneath the car. And he's like, I'm just kidding, man. And and I knew right then that it was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be friends. So, so yeah, we, we, we were jacking it up to check to make sure that the throttle bearing was working. And uh, he had a hydraulic throttle bearing in. And, yeah, I could see it. Uh, when he was pushing on it, it was fine. It was working, no issues. Um, so we basically got, got both of us got in the car, started driving around the pits, trying to jerk the car and dump the clutch. And there was no way we could get that thing to break free. Yeah. So we, yeah, so we made some phone calls and tried to find a place that uh, we could go where if we needed some stuff, um, but we were also looking for shade because it was bloody hot. Oh, it's so hot and humid too. <laughs> yeah, it's like 103 degrees out. Yeah, yeah. And and this is the other part that uh, is, <laughs> that was my favorite part. Like when we left, we packed all up and we started driving and I can't tell there's anything wrong. Bill's starting it with the starter and gets gets the thing moving and then just match shifts every gear and i'm thinking well shit i don't know why we're why we're stopping like we could drive all the way like this 
Like, this doesn't look like there's any problem. I'm sure his starter wouldn't have liked this, but. Yeah. yeah. So we ended up, yeah, we ended up finding a tranny shop. Um, they didn't have a bay for us or anything, but there, there was a car wash right beside it. And I went in there and was talking to the kid in there and, and uh, telling him what was going on. And he said, my, my, my dad did Hot Rod Jag Week. And we started talking and realized it was actually power to her. But the kid was fantastic. He, he let us use a bay. So we pulled the two cars in there, and then we started ripping and tearing. And uh, I was pretty much set up to pull a transmission because I was running mid mid tens, naturally aspirated, um, and had broke some TKOs already. So I was pretty sure I was going to break one. So pretty much had all the gear we needed. And hence the Throw spare the transmission. And hence the and, spare yeah. transmission too. Yeah. 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 And then we ended up. <clears throat> These are the days when you could go to Napa and just buy the clutch disc. I think I spent $22 on an organic clutch disc. We put that in the car with the same pressure plate and stuff, and it was actually amazing. Like, it worked so good because it slipped just a little bit, and it drove awesome. And I remember, like, we got it together that night. I was driving. I was in front of you, and I, like, freaking did a big old burnout or something. And I think your dad was like, what the hell is he doing? He's supposed to break that thing in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was thinking more than that. It's like, let's just get to the damn hotel is probably what he's thinking. Because we, probably I don't know when, I mean, I don't think it took us a super long time. But, uh, you know, we were we were in that car wash for a few hours. Yeah. Know, lying, yeah. lying on a big tarp, uh, ripping and tearing. Yeah, yeah and, and that so was, that, yeah, that was the beginning of really bad decisions, I think. <laughs> it's got worse <laughs> and worse ever since, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh my God! So, so the progression was you had this uh, this badass Pontiac. It's actually the same motor you saw in your car. Actually aspirated, going like mid tens. It made what six, seven hundred horse like that. Yeah, it was like on the engine dyno. It was seven hundred and sixteen horsepower. Yeah, yeah. And then I just had this Cleveland. It was running like eleven sixties, um, <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, this is this is just not going to do. And and then the next year. I still had the same setup in it, but I had gotten the car painted and whatnot. And then I took 2015 off, and then 2016, I did the very first Rocky Mountain Race Week. Um, but by that point, I had built the twin turbo motor in the first iteration of it. And then I think it was 2017, maybe, that I said, like, Rich, you got to come and do this race week. This is pretty awesome. Does that sound right? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think twenty I think twenty seventeen. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Because three then, three years in a row I did drag week. I did drag week and race week. Or Rocky okay. Mountain Race Week. And so that that would have been seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. I okay. drove drove down and did both events, yeah. Wow. And then so <clears throat> I had this twin turbo set up and then you pretty quickly put a pro charger on that thing. Yeah, and actually, I put a Pro Charger on a stock block 455. Oh, okay. Part, okay. Yeah, part of part of the reason I did that is I knew I wanted to go boost. Um, uh, Muscle Motors had actually built that motor for me to try. It wasn't my motor. Mm -hmm. um, and when they asked me if I wanted to buy it, I just couldn't afford it at the time. And um, so I ended up Pro Charging a stock um, 455. And can't remember if that was the first year that I was like all over the track. Um, might have been. Yeah, I think it took a couple years before I just finally told you. I said I can't race with you like this because you're not going to live. Yeah, something about uh, inch and a half a toe in and uh, <laughs> um, and zero caster made life really interesting at about a thousand feet. Just about. Every time, unless I was perfectly in the groove, and you can see that on the thirteen twenty video where I'm, and I was losing friends quick. Yeah, but you got it sorted oh, out, it sorted and out. and it's like night and day difference. So that car is so solid, straight going down the track now. It's pretty. It's actually really nice to watch make a pass. Yeah, well, and, and yeah, it's substantially straighter now. I mean, I had in car footage of myself trying to see if i was causing the problem 
like, was I steering it or, but no, it was, uh, I didn't realize that the car was making enough power that it was at full extension going through the traps. And when I saw a picture of my car going through the traps, I'm like, oh, I should probably check my toe in <laughs> at full extension and see if that's what's causing it. And sure enough, that's, that's what it was. And now the car's straight as can be. Nice. Nice. So one of the one of the segments um, that I want to just jump to that we're going to do on the podcast because we plan to have guests uh, at some point as well is we've come up with five questions that we're going to ask every guest. We're going to call this the TKO round, like a TKO 600. It's a great transmission. It's also a five speed. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Rich these first five questions. So you ready for the TKO round, Rich? I'm ready. All right. Send them my way. All right. What's the first car that you owned or modified? Um, well, it was, I guess it was my first car. So my dad and I, uh, bought my aunt's car and it was a 77 Buick Skyhawk. Uh, so it had a V6. It was an automatic. Um, we painted that car in my dad's garage at the time or our house. And, uh, so that was that was my first car. It was my aunt's. They had actually rolled it over, so it needed a little bit of work. Uh, but you know, we didn't have a lot of money, so that was my first car. Nice. All right. Second gear. What is what, in your opinion, has been the biggest technological advantage or change in our sport to move it forward? I, I think. Uh, if I just had to pick one, um, and I tell people this all the time, it's overdrive transmissions. Like it's a lot, it allows me to do what I do. If I didn't have an overdrive, there's no way I would drive far. It would just, uh, there'd be nothing left. Okay. Third gear. What is your day job? Uh, well, I went to tech school to be a power engineer. So in Canada, you need a steam ticket in order to operate a petrochemical plant. But I worked shift work for 24 years, and uh, now I operators. And uh, actually, I'm responsible for a polyethylene plant that makes 7 million pounds of polyethylene every 24 hours. And what exactly is polyethylene? For those who Plastic don't know? beads. Little little plastic beads, and then we sell them to places like Coca Cola, um, lots of different stuff. It, uh, anything that makes garbage cans, all the way from garbage cans to seven layer wraps that go over your steak in the restaurant or in the uh... <laughs> in the in the grocery store. Nice. <clears throat> okay, uh, fourth gear. What influences you? to build your cars or car. And I think we may have blinked out on audio again for a second. So while we're waiting, um, yep. I'll go through the questions for myself here. Uh, the first car I owned or modified really was this Fairlane. Um, I bought it when I was 17 in 1990. So I've had it for quite some time um, and it has just kind of morphed into what it is today. Uh, it was originally a 289 car, and it was it was dangerous to drive, but uh, continued to do that. Um, <clears throat> in my opinion, what's been the biggest technology to move our sport forward? I would say it's fuel injection, electronic oh. fuel injection, um, because it's enabled us to take just ludicrous power and make it totally streetable. Um, my day job... Um, I have a warranty management company and I have the bank ship Billy company where we're developing uh, digital clutch controllers and some other things for uh, motorsports. And then, so rich for you, uh, we were at fourth gear, the fourth question, uh, what influences you to build your car or car? That's really the challenge. I'll answer that question also. Um, what influences me to build my car the way that I've built it, I guess. Um, and I always like, I really like sleeper cars. I like cars that kind of look stock, look very unassuming. I've tried to mimic that in my own build. Um, and of course, meeting Rich has actually been a huge influence on my 
set up as well because if you can't drive it on the street <clears throat> including driving it thousands of miles without issues and burning unmanageable amounts of fuel then it's just no good all right so rich uh, we were having a, some audio difficulties but he switched to his phone so i think we're in better shape now for that so rich what in your opinion is the secret to stick shift drag racing it's all about the launch baby um actually if you uh, tick performance just released a video this morning i think about uh, a honda with a ls and a t56 magnum in it it's a perfect video to watch um why i love this sport uh because that car is probably i don't know it's an eight second car but he was struggling to get into the nines because he couldn't launch it and uh Jonathan obviously was 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 helping him and getting it dialed in, um, but it's all about the launch. You got to be able to you got to be able to get that thing moving. Whether you you have a, a slipper clutch or a bank shift billy in it, there's you somehow you got to get that car off the line because if you can launch the car in a controlled manner, the rest of the pass will go good. So let's see here, Rich. Uh, we asked you the. Secret to stick shift racing, and then I have the overdrive, the T56 question. Are you ready for number six? Shoot. All right. What advice would you give to someone getting into this sport? Uh, probably don't. Um, <laughs> but if it wasn't don't, it would be buy a car that's running and driving. Don't buy a car that needs 200 hours worth of work to get it running because it's going to end up sitting in the garage like so many other cars. So buy something. It doesn't have to be that fast. Just buy something that's running and that you can enjoy and fall in love with, and then keep working on it and getting it better and better and making improvements. I like that. I like that answer. Um, so let me go back, and I'll ask uh, myself the uh, TKO around the last question. And since... This will be interesting because your audio was screwy and I couldn't actually hear your answer. So I don't know what you said. But in my opinion, what is the secret to stick shift racing? And I'm going to say the clutch is probably the single biggest factor. Um, if the clutch is too aggressive, um, it's going to break everything behind it. And it'll just work its way down the line. It'll start break transmission. And then when you fix that, it's going to break the drive shaft and break the rear end and twist the drive studs. Um, like I may have known somebody that did that, couldn't hardly get the wheels off to go home. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a number of different routes you can go. You can run a diaphragm clutch and there's multiple slipper devices on the, out there that you can use. I mean, of course I'm biased. I have uh, the, the digital clutch controller is going to be my first choice, but there are other options. Um, or a guy can run a uh, fully adjustable slipper clutch, and as Rich has proven, that's something that can be totally used on the street. You just crank the base pressure back down, and it actually, I haven't driven it, but he's told me it's the nicest clutch he's driven, and um, if I'm not mistaken, you might have a pile of clutches in your garage, right? Yeah, I have a stack of, I wish it was bills, but it's a stack of clutches where the bills used to be. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say that's the biggest thing, is... Uh, the clutch, because it's, as we've learned, the short track is the most important point to getting ET. It's it's not how fast the car traps mile an hour, because stick cars tend to trap pretty well. But uh, if you can't get the short track and the launch figured out, the whole runs, you're just trying to catch up, and it's not always great. So, Yeah, Ben Strader from EFI University, I was chatting with him, and he's like, you beat him to the 60, you beat him all the way. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's totally true for you and I. Well, like, what we've seen, and, and I don't know if this is the same for an automatic car, but for every tenth that we shave off the 60 foot, it's two tenths off the big end. Yeah, so I think that's a pretty pretty standard rule of thumb. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the last one is the overdrive question. What advice would I give to someone getting into the sport? And I'm going to pray mirror you. Well, don't. I mean, if you if you love work and you hate money, this is a perfect thing to do. <laughs> And yeah. if, you, if you hate money even more and you don't value your time, build a stick car. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Build something that, that you can drive first and just get, get your feet wet with it. Because 
in the very beginning to take on a giant build, I think you're just going to lose a lot of gas because it's so much work um, to get it right and get it running. And if you have something you can drive and take to the track and just chip away at, that's a lot more fun. And, and honestly, it's more rewarding when you can take, uh, you know, like, like I hate to use mine as an example, but the first time I went to the track when I was a teenager, it went 17, three. And, you know, now it's a, it's a high eight second street car. And I never in a million years would have thought that that was achievable or something. Like I used to think that, gosh, if it could just run 12s on the motor, I might spray some nitrous on it. And it kind of went from running 12s to nines. And I, I remember saying to myself, oh my God, what have I done? Because it, it's, it's a whole different, it's a whole different animal uh, driving a nine second car, especially if you just jump into it from a 12 second car, like it's, it can be a real handful, uh, if you're not careful, I guess. So. Yeah. And for people who know, um, you know, I don't know, five years ago, like even the first drag week, I think the fastest car in the first drag week was like 850. Yeah. Um, and that was yeah. like 2007 or something. Um, and it, and uh yeah overdrives and fuel injections uh, in my mind have changed all that specifically and and i'm biased like a six speed um just because it's just such a low rpm cruise you're not beating up on everything and it uh yeah build something that you could drive to work you can take your wife on a girlfriend not at the same time but on a date <laughs> or um whatever yeah 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 i i would agree totally um i'm trying to think uh what else what else do we want to talk about i mean we want to have some guests on there i've been working on a guest list um yeah we've got we've got a pretty good line of guests actually some uh yeah i think getting some good tech people on um getting a guy like ben Strader on to give us some some thoughts around the theory and uh um going to talk to him a little bit about clutch tuning myself so you never know maybe we can get him on to talk about that so let's talk about one other thing um <clears throat> so this this podcast is going to kind of be hosted and posted on the uh what i'm going to consider the best stick shift drag racing facebook page on the web and that's stick shift nation um you know travis foster has been nice enough to let us kind of host that on there um but you know we're kind of jumping into a there's almost 6,800 members on that page. So, so that kind of gives us a head start for exposure and questions and comments. And we'll just take it from there and see what happens. I'm, I'm kind of excited to do this. I mean, you and I talk a lot about this and we've talked and we're like, you know, other people have said, you know, maybe people would like to hear some of this stuff and, and we'll talk, you know, some of the episodes that we've talked about is how, you know, you and I got to eight, like what that progression looked like. Um, and clutch stuff that we've gone through because I've got a I have a few clutches in my garage too. <laughs> and you know, I think yeah, I think uh, um, fl- or stick car racing is one of the bigger growing segments I believe right now. Like when I went to Sick Week, I think it was the second biggest class, and that's freaking awesome. Like all of these fast stick cars are just going to keep pushing everybody faster and faster, and um. So yeah, Stick Ship Nation being a good example, like that's a lot of members. Um, and it's not the easy way to go racing, but it's the best way to go racing. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Well, I mean, if you have a really nice purse that you need to throw in the back seat, then it's not for you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Where is that purse? Has Garrett still got it? I think I think he might actually. Um, we'll have to we'll have to talk to Cletus about bringing that yeah. back. We'll have to push that tradition because it was kind of fun in the beginning. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you one other thing, and now I'm, it's escaping my mind. But uh, yeah, so so what's uh, what's next for you for the season? Well, well, well I, guess, I uh, yeah. right, right before this call, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it because I was checking out the bottom end after uh, after smoking a head gasket on the latest trip, um, and running like forty one degrees of timing just. 15 degrees more than I was supposed to be running 
So I was just checking it out. By the way, the bearings look fantastic in the bottom end, like brand new. You can see where he's where he was still measuring the rod bearings. Nice. So I'm gonna slap nice. slap it back together, and there's a uh, stick car race. Um, not this weekend coming up, but the one after. So see if I can go uh, go win a lo- local race and and test it uh, one more time before stick week in February. Fantastic. Yeah, so you're planning to drive again down to Florida from Red Deer, Alberta, Canada in the brutal winter. Mud flaps and winter tires, baby. Come on, come on. And what's the mindset? <laughs> I mean, as you told me, they in the late mid to late 1900s that's what they drove yeah yeah i mean it's a car it's got wheels it's if i put the truck and the trailer on a truck and trailer i'd get way worse gas mileage and definitely less smiles per mile so that's right that's right and you've got a heater and a defrost and all that still works in the car yeah it's a it's truly is an eight second street car i drive it everywhere i drive to work it's got a heater it's got stereo uh it's got all that stuff how many miles do you put on it this year? Well, I did sick week. Uh, even with sick week and this one alone, that's uh, 1,200 miles so far this year. Um, and then I drove down to Great Bend, which was another 1,500 miles. Um, so yeah, it's got a couple of miles on it. It'll, it'll, have, uh, it'll probably have 15,000 miles on it this year alone. Nice, nice. That's awesome. <clears throat> so are you one of these, like, like when I have to pull the clutch out and put it back in, do you say some nice things to it because it has no idea what's coming its way? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's uh, I think there was a few memes about that. That like if you've never said you know tapped your dash and said good girl to your car, then you're not a real car guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mine true. gets tapped. True. Mine gets tapped lots. Yeah, I write little Thanks. notes on the on the pistons when I put new ones in there. I like. Like I'm, this one came to party or whatever, and yeah, I just write little notes on the pistons, and but they're always gone when I get back in there later, so I don't know what happened. Yeah, funny <laughs> how that works. Yeah, yeah. And what about you? You got more races planned this year? Uh, yeah, actually, there's a um, there's a track run on the 23rd um, that I'm going to try to go to attend. Uh, I want to do some final. Uh, fine tuning of the clutch controller and just um i'm going to do a little bit of changes on my turbos uh, i'm going to put some bigger hot sides on there because i've been having some pretty high back pressure and uh see what that brings me uh, i see a little grin on your face <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all about the, it's all about the back pressure right right i need to go <laughs> at least 0. 0.0 to six seconds faster than you because how much was your margin of victory at race week here the second one I think 0.025. That's right. So I need 0.026. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> yeah. So well, I just, well, need... just, re- just remember, I was like 15 degrees extra timing. So I think the timing was actually hurting me. So, <clears throat> Well, clearly it was uh, because I definitely lost a night of sleep. I mean, as much as I tried to sleep on my feet, it didn't work that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want to see that whole video, go to Boosted Lifestyle. The whole. Uh, the whole drama played out there. Yeah, yeah, we did change a head gasket in the pits, um, and then thought we had a rod knock, but it ended up that we cracked the collector. Yeah, yeah, made a couple of big holes. I had some welding to do to get that thing back working. Hopefully, I've yeah. plugged all the holes now. Nice, nice. All right, awesome. Well, <clears throat> I think for the first one, uh, we'll see how this is taken by. Uh, Anyone who wants to listen, but maybe we've done enough here. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's probably been a good hour. We don't want to stretch it out too long or they'll have hang up on us. I don't know why they're listening <laughs> to us in the first place. So, Yeah, but we won't even know it. So, like, they'll be rude. Yeah. And we won't even know they were rude. Perfect. Just that way so, I like Perfect. It. So, so as, your, as your illustrious YouTuber co-pilot Kyle Williams said, what we're going to do next time is what? We're going to do better and suck less. Suck less. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Ciao. All right.